Hi everyone, Caroline here. Welcome to your lesson on electromagnetic waves. Microwaves. Creepy little appliances, don't you think? I mean, think about it. You put a bowl of unappetizing, rock-hard popcorn kernels in, press a couple of buttons, wait a few minutes, and voila! You've got a mouth-watering bowl of warm, fluffy, buttery popcorn. But like how? Today's lesson will answer this question and more as we ride the wave of knowledge into all things electromagnetic. So microwave a snack and come right back, because after today's lesson, you'll be able to describe the characteristics of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum, describe the evidence for the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation, and describe how the intensity of light changes with distance from a light source. It turns out microwaves aren't magical appliances after all. Convenient? Yes. Magical? Nope. Microwaves direct invisible radiation waves towards the food we place inside of them. The radiation transfers energy to the food, causing it to get warmer. The radiation is in the form of microwaves, a type of electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, consisting of changing electric fields and changing magnetic fields. Like mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves carry energy from place to place. What distinguishes electromagnetic from mechanical waves is how they're produced and travel. An electromagnetic wave begins when an electrically charged particle vibrates. The vibrating charged particle causes the electric field surrounding it to vibrate as well. A vibrating electric field in turn creates a vibrating magnetic field. The two types of vibrating fields combine to create an electromagnetic wave. The electric and magnetic fields are at right angles to each other and the direction of wave motion. Because changing electric fields produce changing magnetic fields, and changing magnetic fields produce changing electric fields, the fields regenerate each other. As the fields regenerate, their energy travels in the form of a wave. Unlike mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves do not need a medium. Electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum or empty space as well as through matter. The transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves traveling through matter or across space is called electromagnetic radiation. Imagine for a moment that a thunderstorm is coming. You look out the window to see an ominous dark sky and lightning flashing in the distance. Within a few seconds, you hear thunder's low rumble. The storm's getting closer. As it does, the lightning flashes, and rumbling thunder occurs with greater frequency and closer to each other. Still, you see the lightning before you hear the thunder, because light travels faster than sound. But how much faster? The short answer is pretty doggone fast. The long and scientifically accurate answer is that light moves at 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second, which is roughly 1 million times faster than the speed of sound in air. In ancient times, people tried to measure the speed of light, but no instrument was accurate enough. Light moves so fast that at one point, people thought its speed was infinite. Several experiments in the 1800s proved that wasn't the case. Then, in 1926, the physicist Albert Michelson measured the speed of light more accurately than ever before by timing a light beam as it traveled from one mountain to another and back again. Since Michelson, many other scientists have measured the speed of light, and their experiments have confirmed that light and all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum, regardless of the observer's motion. As you recall, earlier in the lesson, we learned that all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. However, not all electromagnetic waves are the same. Electromagnetic waves vary in wavelength and frequency. The speed of an electromagnetic wave is the product of its wavelength and its frequency. Because the speed of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum is constant, the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency. As the wavelength increases, the frequency decreases. As always, when it comes to challenging math concepts, we've got you covered in the post-lesson resources. 
Since the early 1900s, scientists have known that light has a dual nature, meaning it behaves sometimes like a wave and sometimes like a stream of particles. For example, if scientists aim a beam of light at a screen with one slit open, the light behaves as a stream of particles, a single line of brightness. But if two slits are open, the light acts as a wave and goes through both openings simultaneously, creating a characteristic pattern of light and dark fringes called an interference pattern. This pattern occurs because peaks in the light wave at one point sometimes add up with the valleys in the wave at other points, creating regions of dark, known as destructive interference, while places where two peaks intersect create extra bright spots, known as constructive interference. The final stop on this brain train is intensity. Intensity is the rate at which a wave's energy flows through a given unit of area, it's helpful to think of intensity as brightness. If you're a nighttime reader, like I am, then you know that to find who done it, you have to sit near a lamp to see. As you move further away from the lamp, the darker the area around you gets. The light bulb is still emitting the same energy every second, but because you're farther away from it, the energy spreads over a greater area. Therefore, you receive less energy and perceive the light as less bright. Imagine you're building a soapbox derby car, and you want to paint it candy apple red. However, the paint roller just isn't cutting it. You switch to spray paint, and when you hold the can of spray paint close to the car, the paint forms a small, dense spot. But when you pull the can away from it, the paint forms a larger, fainter spot, because the paint is sprayed over a larger area. Like the spray paint on your lightning-fast soapbox derby car, Light intensity decreases as the distance from the light source increases. This happens because photons, the smallest fundamental unit of electromagnetic radiation, travel outward from a light source in all directions. The photons spread through a small area near the light source, so the light is intense, but the intensity decreases as photons spread out over a larger area and travel farther from the source. That's a wrap on electromagnetic waves. If you were paying attention, you now know that electromagnetic waves are produced when an electric charge vibrates or accelerates. Electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum as well as through matter. The speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. Electromagnetic waves vary in wavelength and frequency. Electromagnetic radiation can sometimes behave either like a wave or a stream of particles. Light spreads out as it moves away from its source. Hey, don't forget to check out the engaging games and thought-provoking practice problems related to this lesson to prepare for our next class, where we'll explore the wildly important laws of thermodynamics. And remember, in science, as in life, you matter. See you next time. Hey, hey.